Hello everyone, nice to have you all back for another episode of our 107 channel. Today's topic, we change the worn out rubber mounts of the front end of the rear axle. We will do this job at this 450SL R107. This job is done in a very similar way as well with W114, 15, 16 and 123. Minor alterations were introduced with the above mentioned models except from the 107. I will explain the minor changes during the video. We start right after the introduction. Okay. Here we are underneath that 450 SL. This rubber mount here and this one over there will be changed in this video. We start with this one here being held in place with these three bolts, two smaller ones size 17 bolted into the floor and this larger one which is size 22. This one here is quite long and passing through the rubber mount entirely. This is the new one. This is what it looks like. Please see picture on the right hand side as well. This is how it will be mounted and being held in place with that prolonged bolt. We start unbolting this one here which has size 24 and then move on to the two smaller ones. Better use a long prolongation to apply enough momentum. Quite tight for sure. Just use some blunt force. You won't break anything. You will be surprised about the length of that bolt with a lock washer at the bottom. We now unbolt the two smaller bolts here which hold this bracket in place. Bracket is now coming loose. See the collapsed rubber mount here? Time it is to change that one for sure. As it happened to me, the previous owner replaced the rubber mount with a shot of MPI foam and sprayed it black, the bastard. The man from the MOT who saw that couldn't believe his eyes. To get this old rubber mount out of here, you got three possibilities. Please see picture on the right hand side. Number one with a roller extractor, but the spindle needs to be at least 16 centimeters in length and should not exceed 10 millimeters in diameter, otherwise it will not fit properly. This is how it is recommended in the repair manual. Number two, if the car is not on a jack and standing on the wheels, limited room to move around. Just take a large socket, say size 24 or 26 and you place the socket between the cross member and the underbody of the car. Use some padding, otherwise you would scratch it. Place it here on the cross member on top of the old rubber mount. Then lower the car. The car by its weight will press out the old rubber mount. It does not fall out completely but stays in the sleeve to some small extent. Then simply pull it out with some blunt force. This, of course, will only work when you do not place your pole jack under the cross member. Therefore, there is not enough room left to place a socket on top of the old rubber mount. With some leverage, you slowly force the rubber mount out of the sleeve. Bye bye, old boy. I will now clean the sleeve with a wire brush. As mentioned before, the 107 series has these two notches here which will have to fit for an indentation in the side of the new rubber mount. Here is the new one. See? Indentations on both sides. You just use any of them. It does not matter which one. Otherwise it will not fit. It is foolproof for sure. Brunox. Hello from Switzerland. Swiss product. Rust inhibitor from the spray can, absolutely ideal, long lasting, easy to apply, be generous and apply 4 to 5 coats at minimum. The brackets here are still good, some surface rust but not more. I will give them a wipe with the wire brush and several coatings of Brunox. They will look like brand new afterwards. As 
mentioned before, notches and indentations have to match. Do not forget, I told you twice, do not put the blame on me in case you screw it up. Just saying. Use some lubricant to make this easy on you. Rubber mount is being greased, in place and ready. We use a pole check to press it further into the sleeve to its final position. The cross member will move up as well, just don't be surprised. If car is standing on its tires, if you cannot slide it in entirely, lower the car down until the tires touch the ground and use a check to press up the mount completely. It would fit snugly. To bolt the rubber mount, the cross member needs to be supported with a pole check, otherwise the long bolt will not fit in. Next thing to do, we change the rubber pad which is touching the underbody of the car. See? This is where the cross member with the rubber mount is touching the rubber padding. Off it goes, the new one will fit snugly. We supported the cross member in a manner to easily remount the bracket. It has to be more or less horizontal so you can start bolting. My almost brand new bracket is ready for bolting. It is being drop forked and the protrusion has to face downwards. As mentioned before, support the cross member to an extent to be able to mount the bracket evenly to the rubber mount and underbody. In most repair kits, two new bolts are included, but never the long one which is passing through the rubber mount. Following the manual recommendations, tighten them up with a 40 newton and the big one with a 120 newton. Well, I did my best to eliminate rude language, vulgar narratives and obscenities which my translator sneaked into this video because I did not pay him a second drink at happy hour last time. Back to the topic, changing the mounts, we have accomplished this task in a couple of hours with the help of this blue lift in the background. If you do not have such a check, just add some more hours to change the mounts. If you think you're not made for these jobs, just contact me, I will get it done for you. You can wait for it in the pub down the road with my translator. Hope to see you next time for another episode of our 107 channel. Bye bye everyone, you take care.